Hello, hello, hello. This is Debs Cooper, currently in Wahia, which is near Hamilton in the North Island. Um, and today I am, as I said last week, I was actually going to Sydney, but it's actually going to Sydney this afternoon. So not currently in Sydney, although next week I'll be recording live from Sydney. So today uh, I have the cicadas around. I also have a dog. I don't know if you can see that, a dog. Yep, just wandering in, having a good old lick of his bowl, her bowl there. So there's a bit of noise going on. That's perfect because today I actually had to talk about how to handle external conflict. And when I talk about external conflict, I think about uh, other people. But first, when you're on this call, give me a, a, a like or a love or just a general, hey, hey, I'm here to let me know that you're online. Um, if you've got any questions and you'd like to ask it, I'm just getting everything position so I can actually see what the heck's going on. Uh, if you've got any questions, holler out, just throw them on there. Uh, so let's get into it. So handling external conflict. Now this is different to handling uh, external chaos, which is like the noise outside, uh, the dog wandering, distractions and things like that. But this is actually external conflict. So when I talk about external conflict, I'm talking about more people. Uh, not not objects like a, a car that breaks down or a plane that gets delayed or any of those things. I'm actually talking about external conflict as in people. So I started thinking about what type of people give you external conflict um, apart from everybody if you allow them. So we've got the people that mainly come to mind that I've been working with this last fortnight, um, knowing this one was coming up, was more about boss bosses, employers, employees, um, parents, mums, dads, uh, blood and other, other being people who you have parents yourself, um, but they're not necessarily their mum, mum and dad's best friends or something along those lines, or an auntie who's like a parent to you. A partner can give you external conflict, an ex-partner, current partner, uh, ex-partner's friends, ex-partner's partner's ex-partner, anybody, anybody. A friend, uh, an enemy, um, ex-friend, any, anybody can give you external conflict if you let them. And I think that's the key here is if you let them give you that, then you can easily take on that external conflict. So when I talk about external conflict, um, one of the things, uh, why is this not loading for me? Hmm. Can someone just jump in and just say if you actually can see me? Any comments? Because usually I can see. Uh, okay, well, if there's any comments and I can't see them, I'll answer them afterwards. But if you do have any comments, then jump them on there. Although nothing says that you can hear me or see me. Hmm. Okay, well, I'll just keep talking. I know there's a couple of people online, but I'll just keep talking. So talking about the external conflict. Um, so step one really is to find out who are they and why are they important to you. Now, you'll know that you treat people differently if it's your boss, if it's your parent, if it's a partner, if it's an ex-partner, if it's a friend, an ex-friend. And it's all about the level of importance you put on them and your relationship of how you handle that conflict because you know in a relationship in the first few months and this is also not just intimate relationship but also a business relationship you tend to hold your tongue in certain areas and they call it the honeymoon phase you know if you go and start working at a company they say it takes three months to actually start getting the groove before you speak up although I do remember when I worked for a uh, a large organization many many years ago it didn't take me three months to speak up um, I think it was a, probably a few days and my boss actually said to me Deborah we need to pull you aside and talk to you because you can't just go in and change everything straight away I, I can but no the other people couldn't handle that so I was told to implement one change a month hmm, that could have been a little bit of external conflict going on there so it's actually about how important they are to you of how you handle it so <coughs> excuse me step one is listen to what they're saying 
because they obviously value you enough to share that information with you and they're concerned about you or they want to know something or they're perplexed by it. So listen to what they're saying. They value enough to share. Uh, uh. Don't respond to them straight away if you don't feel necessary. If you feel emotion come up, um, you can, could get angry, you could get sad, you could get elated. The key is actually just to sit and ponder on that and decide what's the best way forward. Because if you, uh, what can happen, and I know I had this in a previous relationship, is I would hold it in and hold it and hold it in, and my partner would say, come on, come on, come on, answer, 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 and then my daughter actually referenced me as a cobra. I just come up and I bite and then I go back down. Now, I don't think that's conducive to anybody. So the wisest way for me is actually to say, look, just give me some time. Let me think about that. I don't know if that sits right with me, but can you just give me half an hour, five minutes, anything that sits right with you? Just give me some time. Sometimes you don't have to put a time frame on it. Just give me some time to actually assess and decide what's the best way moving forward on this. Um, then the other thing is to do is it justified of what they've or what they've said to you what they've brought up to you uh the questions they've asked you to do <clears throat> so there's two things there's a yes or no there will never be a maybe in this is it justified maybe maybe is another way of saying yes but i don't want to look at it right now so it's either a yes or a no yes or a no so if it's a yes the step is to change it and learn from it. That's it. Simple. If it's a yes and it's justified, change the pattern and learn from it. When you do that again down the track, it's okay. It's just okay. Don't beat yourself up. Go back, change the pattern and learn from it. This is a rinse and repeat. Change the pattern and learn from it. If it's justified and it's a no, what it's wise for you to do is strategize how to come up with a plan that's going to have a win-win for you both. How does this serve this person while well, it's serving me? How does it um, not cause more conflict or more heroic actions or more demeaning things that are said or done or actions? So how can this be a win-win for them and for you? Now, interesting, you know how I said for them and you, because they're the most uh, precious right now, because they're asking you to do something. You can handle your own emotion, so that's why I've said them first and then you. And I know I'm all about me.com, clearly. Have been for many, many years. But it is actually about the other person as well. Thank you, little cicadas. So for an example, um, of uh, external conflict I had recently there was two actually that kept coming up in my mind when I was writing this and one was um, an internet provider that I was recently cancelling so when I rung the internet provider and I've been doing this for three months trying to get things moving and then hearing what they had to say and then going away I'm delaying what I'm going to do and then coming back a month later when the bill comes up and delaying it again so it cost me about three months worth of energy before I actually did something. So I rang the internet provider and I said I'd like to cancel my plan please because they were charging me more money to have my landline which made no sense to me but anyway. So when I spoke to the person at the other end of the phone they were clearly having a bad day and I happened to be the person that they got. Now I was clearly having a bad day because each month I was getting a bill and I was being peeved off of it. Now they were still doing their service and their service was running smoothly. It was a bill that I didn't like. Uh, bill, when I say bill, bill, the invoice, the payment method. So they said to me that you have to pay a month's notice and then you have to pay another month and it just got more and more and then you have to do this and you have to do that and you have to do this. So I sort of lost it. I sort of lost it graciously. I didn't swear, but I lost it uh, to this person. Now, interesting enough, was the external conflict was the way they handled me so when I said to them you can't do this you can't do this I've gone online and and I've looked at your policies and procedures and it doesn't say this this and this and they've said do you have a copy of your old contract and I said no why would I have a copy of that and they said well if you've signed it it would be why well she didn't say wise you would have had a copy of your old contract I said I don't have that and she said well what we have now our policies are different to what they used to be but if you don't have a copy of your old contract we can't help you. And I said, well, you'll have a copy. 
and she says uh, we may have a copy but we may not have a copy but it's up to you the signatory to have that copy so because we were both reactive to start with and then she actually and I say slammed me with do I have a copy of my contract was the external conflict justified absolutely because and this is where the change it and learn it comes into play because it was absolutely justified because I didn't have a copy of my contract I'd signed something but didn't have a copy of my contract so was that justified yes it was the way she handled it was just pretty much shutting me down straight away so I couldn't even argue about that so that's a justified external conflict one of the other things I learned uh, when I was younger I worked for a company and we had a I had a performance review once a year you have a performance review and it was an old boss and I perceived she didn't like me anyway and and I tried to get people to come and have my performance review with me and I was like oh we're too busy or we can't do this and blah 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 so I was like okay well I'll go in there and one of the things my boss asked me was what job do you see yourself doing in a year's time so I saw that as an opportunity to be truthful and I said your job now you can imagine what happened when I said your job so she got a little bit defensive she lost her shite, uh, stormed out, got angry with me. And I was very young. I didn't realize. I thought this was a time to be honest. I've learned there's honesty and then there's honesty. And so it went to the complaint went to the boss. And then the boss called me in and started talking to me. Now, that's clearly an external conflict. There was external conflict beforehand. There was little niggles, little bubbles, the, the, the um, kettle the jug the kettle was boiling the water was boiling underneath and it hadn't actually burst out and so that was clearly going on before so I had external conflict before and it escalated when I said her job so what happened there was um, I complained she complained to the boss the boss came in we dealt with it not clearly together for a while uh, and so that wasn't justified I take that as not justified and not justified one so the solution we did is we brought HR in to handle me to handle her and it actually involved involved a job change which was great because the new job I went to was far better than the job I had uh, they got somebody who was a follower of, of the boss they enjoyed working with them more than than me obviously with her and it actually worked out to be a win-win so when we talk about is it justified the first one when I talked about my internet provider was yes I was being an ass uh, the second time looking back now you could say I was being an ass I can hear that but at the time I would say that wasn't justified so I so we I strategized about how to come up with a plan we got HR involved and we came up with a plan and we both moved our way forward now that's the difference between justified and not justified for external conflict so it's where is that external conflict coming from what's the reaction to you how can you move with the most amount of ease so we look at to listen to them don't respond straight away look at this justified find a solution if it's not just if it's just if it's not justified and if it's justified learn from it and move on okay so that's the key steps of uh, handling external conflict that I find so I would love you to give this a go let me know how you go with this what you enjoyed about it what you didn't um, clearly I still can't see anything on my screen I don't even know if there's anybody online right now so I will when I cancel this when I finish this call in this live chat I'll be able to see if there's anything up there so I'll be online I will see you next week from Sydney thank you very much I'll have a different surrounding and all the best with your external conflict Mm, I'd rather have actual external conflict would you rather have external conflict or your own internal conflict mm. anyway let me know how you go thanks very much people it's a great day in Nahawahia and I will see you next time enjoy oh now hang on before I actually do go even though I do say go I've got my dog I'll just show you my dog because my dog is gonna stay here look at him look at my little dog he's been shaved he's been shaved right back do you know why he's been shaved because it's so hot it's so hot up here very very different to the north to the south island so my little dog Ben <laughs> it's not very 
Abby's been shaved and he's loving being in the paddocks and doing all sorts. Oh my gosh, he's just fallen back into my arms. Thank you very much, people. I will see you next time. See you next week and enjoy that external conflict. See ya.